Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. So I want to share a little bit about myself. I'm, I'm really passionate about solving scaling issues around cloud and big data. And that's why I'm at Redapt. Redapt is a, is a uh, solution provider that, that works in all things data center. And we have a practice area around cloud computing, um, which was where I fit in. Our agenda today, what are hybrid clouds? Why we would use a hybrid cloud? Six steps to building a hybrid cloud. And then we'll talk about accelerating that, that, uh, that private hybrid cloud. Um, and then I'll talk about a case study of how we've implemented one. And then finally, we'll wrap up with a home for your private cloud. Um, so what is a hybrid cloud? Does everyone, is everyone familiar with the term? Have they heard it 20 times today? Um, so it's basically just having multiple clouds, both public and private. And typically, the traditional sense is, is being able to scale apps in between both private and public um, clouds. Now, this is kind of a rare thing. I don't know if you're in the, in the uh, presentation just before this one. But it is, we're not seeing that one a lot yet, but it, it is happening. But what we're seeing more of in the hybrid aspect is, is tiered applications between public and private cloud. So back in databases in private clouds and, and anything that needs to burst out in, in public clouds. So why, why would we want that? Well, this is a graph showing typically how we consume IT infrastructure. The blue graph shows infrastructure, and the red, uh, the red line is showing um, application demand. And you see as it goes up and down, and finally it can kind of peak past infrastructure. We've typically been buying infrastructure this way in the past, and it's very difficult because, well, we have to overbuy. Um, so you, you either end up uh, buying too little and being out of a job, or buying too much and being out of a job. So it's really, it's, 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 it's a tough place to be. And then we have our applications that want to scale past what we can have in our infrastructure. So enter the public cloud. We're seeing a new trend with, uh, with this where cloud spend is actually substantial. And we can pull people out of public clouds onto their own infrastructure for a smaller amount of money, uh, smaller spend. And it's very attractive. So I wanted to go over a little bit on the ROI side of what we're seeing in, in, pulling, in, in moving people to a private cloud that can burst both publicly and, and um, scale that way. So first is a social network. You can see their, their monthly spend was right around $75,000. And they have, their, their need was unique. It was they had large instances. And we were able to take them down to three racks. Um, from the 75k spend, that's kind of the the math we're seeing, and their break even was 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 in 20 months. So that was their, their ROI. So next, um, a gaming company with a larger spend. There it is. So 100k a month, and you can see that that they were more RAM intensive. They their apps required more RAM, and we brought them down to um, two racks because they weren't I/O intensive. And their ROI was 10 months. So it's, it's kind of, these are numbers we don't really see out in the field that often. We don't see what this real return is and, and how much we're actually spending towards the public cloud. We're, we're obviously big, big fans and big, big, we love using the public cloud and we want you to continue using it, but there's a use case for both. Um, sometimes you want to or need better performance. You have security requirements, you have regulation requirements that drive you towards um, a public cloud. Yet you still need the burstability of a, of a public cloud. Last one is a customer, a financial service customer, with a much smaller spend of $50,000 a month. But you can see it down at the bottom. It was still a 15-month ROI. Now, the, the problem is that building the infrastructure and building this hybrid cloud um, is very, very, very challenging. You have um, deployment architecture, fault tolerance, network configurations. You have hundreds and hundreds of vendors to choose from um, with hundreds of products, which leads into lots and lots of points of failure or unknowns. So what I want to talk about is the six steps that we use um, for, for building production clouds. It's design, build, manage, automate, test, and deploy. 
So first one is design. And not all clouds are created equal. It's really figuring out what, what's the purpose of this cloud? What are you doing? What is this for? What are the apps doing? Um, what are the users doing with these apps? Figuring out what is this and what type of workloads um, is this cloud going to be used for? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, next thing is looking at the workloads. Um, what are these workloads going to be running on? Taking a, a look at the hypervisors, the networking, the different features of networking, um, storage. Is this going to be a shared storage environment? Is this going to be local disk? Do we have performance needs? Is this going to be NFS or SAN or iSCSI, Block or NAS? You know, there's, there's a lot that goes into this um, in these considerations. So I want to take you on just kind of a, a, a little deep dive on the, the, the building blocks inside of how we design. We first start with the network. And you want to think about things like, do I want load balancers? Do I want firewalls? Are these going to be virtual load balancers or firewalls? Um, think about public IPs. Think about NAT. Um, think about a distributed network. Um, you obviously want durable storage. You're going to be have it, you're, you will have many workloads running on this, this storage. So you want to make the right decision around um, your storage choice. And then there's compute. There's a lot of decisions around uh, hardware these days. There's Supermicro and Dell, and you can, there's, there's uh, Facebook servers and the open compute side. You can go on and on and on about figuring out what compute is, is right for your needs. Then you want to tie that all together with an orchestration layer. Um, that's your, your open stacks and your cloud stacks and what have you. And that's kind of the glue for your physical, um, your, the physical aspect of your cloud. Finally is the monitoring and management. And that's, that's um, obviously key to the cloud infrastructure. This is, this is where the APIs tie in with each other, and this is where you're provisioning your environment. And finally, automating this. Automation is key in cloud infrastructure. Um, you don't want to be doing repetitive tasks, and you don't want to be doing the repetitive tasks that we have to do for our customers. You want to um, automate this. So key things, start with the network, start with the network design. Um, it's <laughs> it's a, a key factor, and, and this is where a bottleneck will happen. So you can figure out your storage and compute and your orchestration. If you haven't designed your network correctly, um, you'll be in a world of hurt. Um, other thing is the next consideration is storage. You, want, you, you really want to nail your storage configuration. You want to decide, are you going to be using storage pods? Are you using standalone storage? Are you grouping your storage for applications? and so on. So uh, step two is the build, uh, putting it all together. I want to show you um, what uh, a sample of what ours looks like. And this is the infrastructure we use uh, to build our clouds. And it's, it's using six servers, and that's it. Um, and, and hopefully by the end of this, you'll, 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 you'll be able to see how you can use six servers to, to have infinite scale. So you start with these six servers. Um, there's the networking at top. We have dual um, redundant switches. We have uh, redundant firewalls. And we have a single management um, one gig switch. And then we have dual management nodes for the orchestration and for management software and for all the different components I'll go into in the next in the management slide. And then we have storage. We have both local storage hanging off um, management server. And then we have dedicated block storage. And then we have our, our two compute servers. Um, so here are some of the items on your build list. This, these are some of the things you want to take care of. Um, you know, making sure you know, ISOs and firewalls and everything's patched and so on. Um, next thing is connecting right scale. And this is probably the easiest part of, of the setup. It's, it's a matter of logging into your console, going in and, and, and adding a new cloud and putting your management server URL in there. Very simple. Um, and you want to, while you're logged in, go into one of the multi-cloud images and start building out your right scale images for your uh, private cloud. <clears throat> Next, I want to talk about manage management <clears throat> and managing your cloud infrastructure. So here is, this is, this is what the workflow looks like. Um, on the left, you see, you see RightScale. RightScale is managing your orchestration layer. Your orchestration layer is managing your bare metal. Um, 
monitoring is, is very important. You want to be monitoring all aspects of your hybrid cloud. Um, there are two types of monitoring. There's reactive and proactive. And reactive monitoring is, is your typical kind of break fix, what's hot, what's, what's, what's not working, what's out. Um, you know, like your Nagios and Ganglia here. Um, we, we put more attention on, on proactive monitoring, and that's important in cloud infrastructure because you want, to, you want to see what your workloads are doing. Workloads, you have big workloads, you have small workloads, and they really don't like each other. Workloads aren't fans of, of, of being on the same physical hardware. So we like doing capacity management to group similar applications together and create pods out of these uh, similar applications. And after doing this capacity planning, you're going to be able to do VM placement. So VM placement, again, another, another key to successful uh, cloud infrastructure is, is knowing how to balance that out, knowing how to, to auto-provision and balance your bare metal machines and your VMs. Number step four is automation. So do you really want to manage and patch and update hundreds of servers yourself? So hopefully the answer is no. Um, here, this is an example of, of a couple of the tools we use on the, on the bare metal side. We like Cobbler and Crowbar. We also like uh, Chef for managing and doing configuration management of our physical infrastructure. Um, and finally, kind of the end all of automation is um, right scale. They've done all the heavy lifting on the configura configuration automation side to make uh, life easy so that we can really just sit back and um, deploy our cloud. Number five is test your cloud. Testing is, um, is an important factor for uh, seeing what it can do and where it's going. Load test it. There are scripts that you can, you can fire some scripts up for local load testing. You can use companies that are uh, in here like Apica that do um, load testing from uh, hundreds of points around the, around the world. Um, and then this is, this is one of our, our little secrets is, is break it, tear it down, and automate that, the, the tear down process, because it's just as important um, tearing it down and rebuilding it as it is building it. <clears throat> we actually automate that process. So when we bring things up, we automate taking it back down to zero, bringing it back up again. And then watch and see what that's doing when you're load testing it and you're bringing it up and bouncing it around, bouncing it up and down. Um, and from there, that's where you can plan. You can plan where your pods are going to be placed, where the workloads and applications are going to be placed. So the sixth and final step is uh, deploy, deployment. This is, um, this is where everything comes. Uh, you're going to see the fruit of your labor um, deploying your cloud infrastructure. Um, and, and this is where you see, um, now that we have a private cloud set up, we can burst out to the public. And we're not bound by any of those hardware constraints that we've, we've been bound for, I mean, how many years? Um, so infinite scale and now that you have that unlimited capacity, um, and based on watching your capacity, you can now um, design clusters, design pods um, for maximum scalability, and all under one pane of glass. Um, and that's using right scale. We, we use right scale. We think of that as kind of above the clouds management tool, orchestration tool, kind of the everything, that one interface that, that, um, for, that we can deploy entire clouds with. <clears throat> so what are the next steps? Find six servers. Find six servers in your environment. It should be fairly easy to find some existing equipment. And if you don't have it, well, um, we, we can help with that. Um, we have a turnkey cloud, hybrid cloud in a box solution that's already right scale enabled that you basically can plug in and begin deploying. You'll see it in your dashboard and begin deploying workloads. So we've made it really simple for you to deploy applications in a hybrid cloud. And um, 
Yeah, and we can also help you leverage existing assets if you need help with that. So we had a customer that was um, a medium-sized user of Amazon, and they had a need for scaling out past um, where Amazon locations were. They needed to be in several countries, and Amazon just wasn't there. They're very happy with Amazon. Um, they're still on it, and they're happy with their choice. Um, big fans, but they, they had latency issues with the, facil the, the one facility in Europe that they have, and they needed to be all over Europe. So they were also bound by regulations in several countries, and they weren't really sure how much growth they were going to have with, with um, these applications. So they solved their problem by basically deploying um, a couple of our um, pre-made racks out in several countries and now can burst between Amazon and each private location that's their own gear, their own private cloud, and they're, they're using that under right scale. So they see that as they see multiple clouds um, inside their dashboard, which is really awesome. And that's a need we're seeing with a lot of customers is they want this. They want this Amazon anywhere. And you know, Amazon's such a great service. And why can't I have an Amazon um, in my building or in my data center or in the country that, I'm, that Amazon's not? Um, so with that, um, the, the one missing piece is, is a home. Finding a home for your hybrid cloud. Um, what the, the, the key that you want to want to look for um, is is your you, latency is going to be your biggest enemy in these hybrid clouds. So you want to find a place that um, is fully connected, has is connected with every cloud provider, has low latency, and um, just has those requirements. And with that, I'd like to introduce Greg Adgate to um, talk for just a minute. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Greg Adgate with Equinix. We're a data center provider that works with Redapt and, and many of you who are cloud providers in the room. Um, and just to reset, uh, our, our job is to listen. And when we talk to corporate IT, we hear um, there's a drive to do something with cloud. They're being pressured to investigate cloud and figure out a way to leverage it. Test and dev, um, and as Michael said in the beginning, it's beyond test and dev now, it's strategic. What is the strategic direction around cloud? Um, but you have the issues around security, compliance, and performance that um, are, are uh, barriers to public cloud adoption. So uh, not to mention, most of you have not just dozens of applications, you have sometimes hundreds and thousands of applications, uh, which all cannot go immediately into the cloud. So what happens is it ends up being a, an, an evolutionary strategy of adopt some form of cloud, and then as you adopt and migrate, more applications that are cloud ready, then you can actually migrate more applications over. Um, we happen to be a da data center provider and we're in the middle of both um, private and public cloud um, deployments as our customers. Um, the other backdrop we see um, is you're being asked to do things by, while you're preserving capital, reducing costs, uh, maintaining your compliance and security needs, and also making sure that the business remains agile which is a, a wonderful challenge. Um, and, and then, so you're, you're seeing data center consolidation, virtualization, and, and ultimately high density compute being uh, technologies you deploy. Uh, being a data center operator, uh, we understand when you have aging data centers and you move to high density compute, that does some funny things with your engineering in the building, where we've seen buildings where there, there's a third full and the rest is empty because you've consumed all the power and cooling in those high density nodes. And you're now having to raise your hand to say, I need 10 to $50 million to upgrade that existing facility or figure out another solution. And so two things happen. Um, you figure out how to rework workloads by leveraging cloud resources. And we also see you calling us saying, uh, do you have some data center capacity that I can leverage to move certain applications over? And so back to the home theme, um, when you're, when you're going to look for a home, typically you'll go to a real estate agent or an expert who can give you advice on what the choices of homes are. Um, in this case, many of you who are in enterprise will talk to Gartner, and Gartner will lay out 
you can build your own home, you can lease a home, you can rent space in a COLA facility, or you can move straight to hosting or services providers. And so where we play is we're a COLA provider who also sells and delivers hosting firms and cloud firms within our buildings. Um, and I'll show you a slide on us later, but it essentially gives you range. It gives you, it gives you the flexibility to make a choice now and migrate later without having to lift and shift everything down the road. Um, so we fit in that red box. And um, this is a picture of our customers. And uh, really what makes it meaningful is companies like Bechtel, who had their own data centers, who consolidated, virtualized, and then decided to move uh, their compute into Equinix to cross-connect to those networks that are in the upper left, uh, upper left-hand corner um, to drive costs down and, and ensure that the performance is there because of the things that Jeff laid out, some of the challenges Jeff laid out. Um, another picture there is Netflix. Um, they made a decision on their streaming service that they didn't want to have a, an IT, they didn't want to invest any capital in IT. So they went to Amazon. They then leveraged Level 3's content distribution network to stream all of your, your media to iPads and, and Wii consoles at home without ever paying any capital for their infrastructure. Again, all happening in this ecosystem that happens at Equinix. Um, and, and kind of my punchline is Redap. Um, they are helping you design, deploy, um, and, and execute on not just cloud and private cloud, but any compute solution. They just happen to have a really excellent um, formula for getting you to, pr put to cloud. They'll help you deploy uh, your own instances, leveraging right scale, and the guys that are on the public cloud side are customers of Equinix, um, access through right scale and or through direct connection in the same physical building, like the AWS guys. In Equinix Ashburn and Equinix Silicon Valley, their edge nodes are there and their direct connect product lives in our data centers. So if you're corporate IT and you're trying to figure out, well, I need to own some and manage some, but I need to actually connect into AWS, you can actually do it in the same physical building through a fiber cross connect, eliminating a lot of the latency and network performance concerns that, that Jeff had laid out. Um, and at the foundation of it all it, for us is over 700 network providers who actually are our customers who peer their traffic in the buildings. And so out of the Equinix pitch back into when you're trying to figure out what to do for your private cloud deployment, um, find a place that's reliable, um, move the workloads in that you need to move in and can move in, um, and, and uh, pick a location that is network dense and network rich. And we're certainly not the only ones. Uh, we just happen to have a good story in, in that area. Um, and find, find a company that actually knows how to get you at least to that base investment of private cloud, uh, like a Redapt, who can get you set up and position you for as you want to evolve your, your uh, decision making over time. Some of that stuff will never move to the cloud. Some of that stuff will always be on legacy stuff and you still need to run it somewhere. Uh, but a lot of it will move. Um, and being in a position to move uh, between your own assets and these tremendous cloud companies that are, that are deployed all, all around the world, um, to us is what we see as a, a, a best practice in corporate IT. Um, and this red disk in the middle is in 13 countries 38 cities around the world and over 100 different locations. So you can pick the site, pick the deployment where the end users are to deploy your assets.